The case of admitted NSA leaker Edward Snowden renewed a debate over what really constitutes whistleblowing. As his drama has demonstrated, exposing alleged government or corporate wrongdoing is a controversial and tricky business. That's why there are lawyers specializing in the field. We introduce you to a Washington firm in the business of helping people blow the whistle. Whistleblowers have to know how to protect themselves. Our handprint is all over whistleblower protection in this country, and that's something our firm is really proud of. There it is. The whole resolution is right here. We are lawyers, period. Now, some people misinterpret that and view us as public advocates because we do public advocacy, and we strongly support our clients. But at the end of the day, it's hardcore legal advice. The whistleblower is putting so much at risk in terms of their job, their careers, their livelihood. They need the honest opinion. Most law firms, it, it really is all about billable hours. These guys, uh, it's all about the justice in the cause. Linda Tripp, she was so misunderstood and still is. It was a tragedy. When she came to us, she'd been completely smeared. We achieved a successful Privacy Act settlement because the U.S. government violated her rights, went into confidential files, and smeared her. There needed to be accountability. No whistleblower ever comes out of a whistleblowing situation whole. But to the extent that I could um, receive a remedy, I only received that remedy through Steve, Mike, and Dave, um, who, who fought tooth and nail for me. This former UBS employee has just won a $104 million award. Brad Birkenfeld single-handedly exposed the largest fraud in American history. He had the goodies on the largest bank in the world and all of their American clients who held illegal accounts. But he didn't go to the whistleblower office. He went to the Justice Department Criminal Division. It was a disaster. We got in the case after he was found guilty and had to reconstruct it. And we were able to win that case. And what's incredible is the first whistleblower who went to prison for exposing a fraud ends up getting the largest whistleblower reward in U.S. history for an individual, $104 million. There's tremendous pressure to silence the whistleblower. And it's almost always about money. When Enron collapsed and people began to really understand that a whistleblower can save the middle class a lot of money, the laws made a great leap forward, letting whistleblowers go into federal court, letting whistleblowers get more rewards. And that's the trend we've seen since. He's not a dissident. He's not a whistleblower. He's been charged with a crime. Snowden is a whistleblower. He follows the pattern. Uh, going to the press is a protected activity under U.S. Supreme Court case law. And the tragedy here is that there was a law governing and protecting Snowden that existed, and Congress repealed it. So who's to blame if you have no rights and you go to the press because Congress took away your rights? Who's to blame? The hardest part is telling a valid whistleblower they have no case. They missed a statute of limitations. They have fallen in a loophole. Half of my clients say they're not a whistleblower, and many of them it takes years to live up to that label. We're just hoping over time that it gets an, a positive connotation, but today it's still mostly negative. One senator trying to change that I was Chuck Grassley, a longtime champion of whistleblowers. He led an effort in the Senate to pass a resolution making July 30th, 2013 National Whistleblower Appreciation Day.